Ustaz. Insya-Allah alhamdulillah. We now come to the second uh, session on the Q&A. So if you have any question pertaining to Imam Dao and Sheikh Abu Zaki lecture, you can pass or uh, the MC was saying putting the question on the wall and our usher will send to the stage insya-Allah. So without further ado, I'd like to ask first question uh, to Imam Dao regarding anxiety and uh, someone was asking about how does zikir help with anxiety because I have a friend who has panic attack almost daily because she experienced a sexual assault before. Does zikir help or does she need medication? For depression as well, can we take medication? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. When it comes to taking medication, I always don't like to talk about something I do not know. Uh, medication prescription drugs is uh, dealt with by psychiatrists, not even just a psychologist. Usually you are given medication when you have chemical imbalances and they treat you with chemicals to balance your imbalances. So that the person, if they feel they are at that point, definitely they need to consult a psychiatrist to be tested and see what they need. And then the proper medication would be prescribed. As far as uh, this anxiety and uh, special, uh, and, and liquor, there is a method of treatment right now in the States uh, called uh, myofascial release. Uh, as physical therapists, we, we treat some of those conditions such as uh, abuses and injuries are called insults. When it happens to the body, there is what is called uh, cell memory. The body maintains some of the memories the old, of the old injuries. So there are certain procedures of treatment that, they, that brings them back into that. It is interesting for someone like us as Muslims when we deal with adhikar and know what dhikr can do. And you go through the, the trainings of treating the cell memory. You will find out it's nothing but uh, dhikr with tafakkur. It is when one gets to be reminded of the condition and the tafakkur that you remember. One of the important terms that is used is remember that you've survived it. Remember that you've survived it. Survived it. it happened in the past, it didn't kill you. So as it is said in English, what didn't kill you make you stronger. So build strength from that. Yes, it's easy to just say, but when you start dhikr, you remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ala bi dhikri lahi When one starts now with this adhkar, you don't expect it to happen overnight. As I said earlier in the, in the topic, you start with dhikr with ghafla to get to a point where, when you get to have dhikr with al -ghiyab. So at that point now, you have gotten to a point where there is nothing between you but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what you're going through no longer exists because you have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How does it feel? It is said, what you do not know the taste of it, you can never tell anybody what it tastes like. So the taste, sweetness of honey, you only know because you've tested what sweet is. So one needs to get through that training to get to that level. But to determine whether they need medication or not, uh, when they get to that level, of, of course, I will recommend it that they see a psychiatrist. Jazakallah khair, Imam. Uh, this question for Ustaz Abu Zaki, or Sheikh Abu Zaki, sorry. Uh, can someone become a wali later in life, or must they be born, like, chosen to be a wali when they are born by Allah SWT? Not necessarily. Some people, just a few seconds before their death, Allah Ta'ala promote them to be a wali. Last minute in the life from a kafir convert to Islam, immediately promoted to a wali. So, could be someone has committed sins throughout his life. Anytime Allah Ta'ala wants to forgive, he can forgive. As mentioned by Imam Habib Abdurrahman al Mashur, Mufti of Hadramaut, we must have husnul zan towards all our brothers. Husnul means good. What's husnul done? Good thoughts to our brothers. Even up to what level we have, we have, we must have good thoughts. Even if we see him commit maasiyat, up to what extent? Even if you see him committing zina in front of your eyes, 
During that time, you cannot have good thoughts. Immediately when he stopped, he passed through a pillar. After passing a pillar, you can put that good thoughts again. Up to what level? You can even regard now that now maybe he's a wali already. Between that split second, Allah Ta'ala can forgive him and promote him. It's not impossible. So, meaning that someone not necessarily to be born a wali. Of course he's chosen. Of course he's chosen, destined to be a wali. No matter what he has practices, he has practiced before. But if Allah Ta'ala wants him to be someone special, Allah would take him up even in later part of his life, even after committing sins after sins after sins throughout his life. Um, it seems like you have many questions which is quite related because... Uh, you were talking about cultivating mindfulness. So a lot of questions on zikir and penny attack. So this is another question, which is which I find it very interesting question because I met such people before. So the question is, uh, my sadness still persists even after I doing my daily awrat, daily zikir. And sometimes it comes in my dreams and penny attack. Should I be more patient? What's your advice? It will always be patience. It's always continue to be patient. How long could I be? How long should I wait? Remember what the Sahabas told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam: Allah inna Nasrullahi Qareeb." You always think about the, the assistance of Allah is coming. It's coming every day. You do not expect Allah. Like he said, it's not earlier this morning. We heard it in the topic. It's not you order it from uh, Amazon and you expect a delivery in one day. It's Allah's will and he'll bring it to you whenever he brings it to you. And I said earlier that Allah could put you into this test. The person is going through that uh, sadness of whatever the, the test that she or he was going through. Allah put them into that test. And that could be where Allah could elevate them from that test to a maqam of a wali. Allah could put, bring them from that test to anything that he chooses to be. So it, all I can advise that person, easier to say, to, to say sitting here, but all I know is to tell you encouragement that know that Allah knows best and know what's best for you. Accept and continue to do your duties. Should I stop my azkar? Should I stop my salawats? No. You continue to do what you do because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and the Sahabas had gone through so much test, so much punishment. They, pers- they persisted and with that persistence the victory came. Mr. Abizaki, what is the practical step you can take to increase our tawakal to Allah? What are the steps? Okay. Tawakal. Tawakal means you submit everything to Allah Ta'ala. Doesn't mean that tawakal, when you leave everything to Allah Ta'ala, you don't need to do anything, you don't need to work on it. Our part, we have to do, we have to do. We have to protect, we have to take steps, we have to take steps. That is our part. But the result, we leave to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We must know that in life, actually, we are not required to do anything. All path is set. What's going to happen two hours later, three hours later, all is being set. Tomorrow, until, until, until heaven or hell, all being set by Allah Ta'ala. What we need to do is just follow the path of life. If we meet anything happy, we praise Allah Ta'ala. We meet anything sad. We make dua to Allah Ta'ala. We leave everything to Allah Ta'ala. We cannot in tawakal. Sometimes we say that we have tawakal towards our friend, a non-Muslim tailor more than tawakal to Allah Ta'ala. For example, I'm having, I'm invited to attend a function three more days. I need a good suit. I don't have money. I only have $30. And then I want to have a good suit. But I know this friend, even though he's a non-Muslim, I just go to his shop. Can you make for me one? I leave to you. What material? But I want brown color. Brown suit. But I don't have money to pay. And then I have only three days. Oh, you don't worry. You leave everything to me. Say, never mind. I trust him. 
is my friend. He loves me. He will take care of me. He won't kecewakan. What is kecewakan? He won't disappoint me. I know that three days later, if I go to his shop, I would get what I want. I won't even ask him every time I pass, have you sew my suit? Have you cut this cloth? I know that this night I come, I will just take what I want. Leave everything to him. So after three nights, you go to his shop, the suit is ready. But it's not brown, it's black. Why? He say, don't worry, because you say you're attending this function, function, no one wears brown. All wear black. So I make you what is suitable for that function is what is best for you. Oh, I thought I, you can help me everything, but you do more than that. That is tawakal. Actually, we, we cannot do. We are helpless. We cannot do anything. Allah can do. Have trust in Allah Ta'ala. Allah loves us more than this tailor. Allah can provide us more than this tailor. Allah knows what is best for us more than this person. Ya Allah, I need this. I want this. I leave to you, Ya Allah. Give to me, Ya Allah. It will give to you. And then when you tawakal, you must expect changes by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from what you want. It's not necessary that you have tawakal. You, you, have, you can gain what you want exactly. Sometimes Allah ta'ala change. Sometimes Allah ta'ala never grant you that because he wants to give you something better. That is tawakal. If you work without tawakal, you achieve, it's no good. You work with tawakal, you achieve, that is good. You don't work, you just tawakal, you achieve, that is better. If you work, if you don't work, you tawakal, you don't achieve, that is better than if you work, you achieve without tawakal. If you do tawakal, you don't achieve. You say that if you leave to Allah Ta'ala, He would grant us. He didn't grant us. That is better. Then if you achieve, but without that ta- tawakal. So you must submit to Allah Ta'ala. You must leave everything to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Have trust in Allah Ta'ala who loves you very much, who can provide you with everything that you need. Inshallah, well explained. Uh, a question for Imam. Is a very popular question among our Muslim community. Uh, people was asking because I think they are facing some hardship in their family. So they are saying that, uh, you know, many of them were writing in and saying that the sign of someone, or sorry, the sign of a Muslim having anxiety and depression is not good because it shows that you have a lack of Iman and lack of faith. So, you know, people always associate with such taboo. So, what do you, what have you said about it? This uh, type of topic we addressed once in the states uh, with uh, a group of psycholo- psychologists, and talking about uh, depression, depression, anxiety, and and, and likes. So they're talking about depression, anxiety, and and alike. The unfortunate thing is. Uh, they have been stigmatized. That is only for the weak and those who lack faith. And in fact, uh, the world of psychologists has determined them to be diseases that people go through. Depression is known to be a disease. There are certain level of depression. One needs prescription medication to balance the uh, chemicals. So at that point, do we do not. We are not psychologists. We are not psychiatrists to be able to determine who has the problem and who does not. These are diseases that people go through. We should treat them as we treat other diseases, as they have them. People, when they have uh, cancer or they have any kinds of itis, bursitis, tendonitis, or they have any of musculoskeletal diseases, they go to those who are specialized and teach and treat them. So my recommendation is not only while you have anxiety and depression, go grab your piece and start saying, La ilaha illallah, it's going to go away. You need to do what you need to do. Uh, like the Sheikh was talking about uh, in, uh, in regards to tawakkul. That is tawakkul versus tawakkul. You know, you go in and say, yeah, what the Prophet told the Sahabi, go tie your camel 
and then make the wudu. You start depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you have a disease, if you have a problem that gets to that level where you've tried all the other cars, you've tried the consultation with your shuyukh, and they try to guide you and it's not working, there may be an underlying disease that is not being treated. So it is very important that we do not neglect these problems before it gets out of hand. There are those cases where it got out of hand and the person committed suicide because the problem was never treated. Misdiagnosis has always been the problem. That's why differential diagnosis is very important. So you ask those who know to help treat the problem. And I, I will end by saying, let's not belittle those problems. They are serious problems and they need to be treated. Wallahu a'alam. Jazakallah Ma'am, thank you very much. Uh, next question to Shay Abu Zaki. Uh, can you advise us how we how to munajat or istihara to find a spiritual guide, a wali to guide us, uh, the du'a or anything that you can advise? Imam Haggad said that this is important for us to have a sheikh to guide us. But it's not just anybody we can pick up to be our sheikh. One teacher can be anybody. You learn fiqih, you learn tasawwuf, you learn hadith. A sheikh means someone that can guide you, that you leave everything to him. He said yes, yes, he said no, no. A sheikh. But it's not easy to find one. You must always make dua to Allah Ta'ala to send, to send us one sheikh that can guide us. While waiting, you just do your ibadat sincerely towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he sends you one sheikh to guide you. But sometimes, Habib Haddad say that someone didn't realize that Allah ta'ala has already sent him a sheikh. But only that he cannot recognize that sheikh because he could be someone that just sell popcorn outside his house. Or someone that just a gardener in front of his school. But that fella, as we said just now, a wali of awliya, is observing you from far, making dua for you, give protection for you, submit reports regarding you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is your sheikh. He is your sheikh. And then all this while, that is still maintained to look for a sheikh, desire to have someone to guide you, Showing that you are still being guided. You are already being guided. You are not just left to astray. So, keep on asking. Keep on praying. Keep on make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep on good relationship with good, good people. Until Allah ta'ala really send you one sheikh. Every time I advise our friends, Whilst we do not know who is a wali, who is a sheikh, but we need a pure heart. Our heart need to see, to face a pure heart so that it would be attracted. So while waiting for a wali, a sheikh, we need a pure heart, right? You sit, make friends with insane people, with retarded people. All these are no sins. Confirm Ahlul Jannah. It's not that we want their madness. It's not we want their unsound mind. It's not that we want we see them a retarded person. But we need their pure heart. We need their pure heart. We need our heart to face this pure heart. This pure heart. Something for you to learn. And then if you just meet with these people... You just regard them as small boy, make fun of them, make joke with them. You won't gain anything. Have respect to these kind of people. The Ahli Jannah. Confirm when they raised later in Mahshar, they are sick now. When they raised in the day of Mahshar later, they will be okay. Then they won't, they won't enter hell because no sins. They won't be 
jadi tanah. Won't be changed to soil because they are not animals. They would definitely enter heaven, and then they would be friend with those who be friend with them from now. Be friend with them who would gain something. If they are jannah later from now, their heart can show you some guide. Sit with them, treat them nicely, treat them like not like insane person. Talk to them nicely. Have some conversation with them, and they try to pick up something from them, something to learn from them. Their pure heart would relate something which you can't even think of, even which you can't even get if you sit with big big people from this from this retarded child, from this insane person. Until you can accept them, then Allah will send you someone to really guide. If this kind of person you respect, you want to learn from, you don't just throw them off. Then Allah will send you someone to guide you. Try that while waiting for someone, one sheikh to guide you. Sit with this kind of people. Again, so much thing. Uh, due to time constraint, we have last question. And I think we want to ask Imam. And this is also another very popular question that people in in our Muslim community will always like to address. So, how do you diagnose between a sihir or a mental delusion or you know mental illness? How do we go about it? Because a lot of times when people suffer from grief or, or any unexpected tribulations, they develop certain uncertainty in themselves. So most of the time we will say, or we will say that it's sihir or it's something evil, or you know, how do we see the differences or what kind of help or what kind of ways we can delve into it? Uh, one of the things that is very important is not to have a problem and end up with the worst problem. Someone is sick and you don't know what they have and you diagnose them with being masahur. Somebody put a curse on them. Somebody put this on them. So you yourself could be committing shirk while you're doing that because now you've taken the power of Allah out of it. Don't, everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you do what you know. The Prophet sallallahu wa sallam was a sihr was put upon him. And that's when Il Falak when Nas al Ma'awizatani came. So you pray with the reviews of the of the Ma'awizatain. If someone is, is is sick, mentally sick, again we'll go back to diagnosis of mental sickness and have those who can treat them, treat them. But you know, you do not ignore what you know as as a believer, which is to use your azkars, use your isti'azat, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you with this or that. But if someone is, is has a mental sickness and your judgment is just somebody had to put a spell on him and you're running around left and right to find an, a spell remover, it might be too late by the time you come to help him. Use the modern medicine that we have to treat this person and someone does just not wake up one day and become that. We have schizophrenic, we have bipolars, and we can sit there and, and label these people as people that are masoor and yet they have a bipolar condition, or they have a schizophrenia. Those are conditions known. So consult with those who are expert in this area. While you are having your shuyu, pray for you, while you're doing the adhkar, the isti'azad that you know, use them, but do not neglect this. I'll end up with one uh, so, so, uh, type of, a, I don't know how to call it, but one of the shuyukhs of Shaykh Ibrahim is a uh, right-hand man. Shaykh Ibrahim, uh, what's his name? Ibrahim Ajob. Shaykh Barham, they call him. Someone came to him and asked him, why does uh, uh, Ruqiyah doesn't work no more? When somebody has a headache, he used to come in and read on their head, Lawanzana uh, al Quran or Ayat Quran, and the headache goes away. Why it doesn't work no more? And his funny joke answer was, because we do have aspirins and Tylenol now. Um, uh, with this, we have ended the second uh, Q and A. So, inshallah, looking forward to the f- tomorrow. Inshallah, more Q and A. And with this, I return back to the MC. Jazakallah khairan, Imam Dau, Sheikh Abu Zaki, Brother Khalid, 
Again, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, give a big round of applause. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, so we've come now to the end of day one. Alhamdulillah, it's been an extremely blessed day with tons of knowledge being shared and explored. Before we conclude the first day of Spol Malaysia, we would like to invite Sheikh Abu Zaki to make a closing dua. This is the dua which you, we, usual, we usually recite when we visit the Makam of Awliya. And then when we also have desire to be included in the group. Dua kunut. Do not our normal dua kunut. So when we go to any Makam of Wali, we do not know what to recite. We recite this dua. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayit. Ya Allah, give me hidayat as those you have given hidayat to them. Give us afia as those you have given. That is this awliya and this salihin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayit. Wa afina fi man afayit. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayit. Wa barik lana fi ma a'atayit. وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك وإنه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من عاديت تبارك ربنا وتعاليت فلك الحمد على ما قضيت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين With that I said I will, I will tell you, sorry. With that, I say good evening, everyone, and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.